Hello, I'm Rachel Piper with Size Diverse Pilates. Welcome to my channel where I'm trying to make Pilates more accessible for the larger population. Today, I'm going to do a flow of level one reformer. And this is going to be a, in a different order than what I have on my channel already. This is going to follow the level five order, but we're only gonna be doing level one. I'm gonna see how this all plays out. Uh, I, things extra that I have is my short box, of course, pads, a slant or wedge, whatever you call it. And then I have a long strap that I'll have to put on. If you have a double loop situation because you have ropes instead of leather straps, then you won't need to do this. You'll use your longer straps. But if you have a leather setup that has a short strap here in leather and then wooden handles, um, having these longer straps will be great for one of the exercises that we do. It'll hook right here and it'll be pretty darn long in comparison. But that's why I'll be swapping those out. Headrest up, foot bar up, here we go. Level one, I haven't done it in this order before. So we'll just see what happens. Lie on your back with three or four springs. Again, foot bar is up, headrest is up, coming into Pilates V, heels together, toes apart with the balls of the feet on the foot bar. Tailbone is heavy, top of the back of the head is heavy, and then arms are pressing in, trying to reach the bottom ribs back. You'll stay in this position for all of the footwork exercises. Nice big inhale, really wide with those ribs. Exhale, see if you can pull the bottom part of your ribs into the mat. Two more like that, inhale and exhale. Breathing into your mat, inhale now wide and ribs back. Fill up space on that carriage as you expand that breath, then exhale everything out. When you exhale, think that you're heavy in that tailbone. And let's get started. 10 of Pilates V. Reach it out and bring it back in. You're trying to press the top of the back of the head in to create some space. If it's uncomfortable for you to have your head rest up because you have a lot going on in the chest area and you feel like your breath is restricted, go ahead and put that headrest down. You could put a couple of small pads in there if you need a little extra support. Keeping the tailbone heavy, we reach all the way out and then we stay long as we come back in, which just means that it's like a feeling that we have a string on the top of our head and one's helping lift us up and stay up. Come on in, bring the legs together, even though this is level one, I want you to think about how you can reach those legs up and in together. So you get to lift the legs up, bring them together, and then bring the arches on top of that foot bar. Wrap the toes around, wrap the heels under, and press out. When you're out here, think about how long you can get, how open your shoulder, shoulder collarbones are, <laughs> and then how heavy you are in the hips. Stay that way as you come back in. Tailbone is heavy. 10 more here. Well, 10 total. As you probably noticed, I don't cut anything out of these videos. So you just get me working out, saying the things, however they pop up in my mind. And sometimes my mouth is a lot faster than my brain. Last one, bring it in. As you come in, press the tailbone down. Use your center to lift those legs. Place the heels on the foot bar. Take the toes up to the sky. Keep them there as you go out and come back in. And you can play around with when you come out. Can you be out here? Have those collarbones nice and open. Have your tailbone pressed in and still be pressing to the top of your head and then reach it back in. The tailbone leads us in. Center, we have 10 total here. These are approximations. Three more. 
reach it out, bring it back in. As you come in, you're gonna do the same thing. Pull yourself in, into your center, lift the feet up, put the toes on, reach yourself out with that lifted heel. Then from here, you're gonna stay out, you're gonna reach the heels under and lift them back up. We have 10 here. You can focus on your breath on this one, trying to reach long through the neck, opening up those collarbones. Nice, slight press in the arms down and still breathe into those back ribs. Last one, bend the knees, come in. Now, if your foot bar doesn't go down, that's okay, but practicing this transition, even in level one is good. Take your feet down, lift the foot bar up, and then you're gonna kick out the bottom, depending on your reformer, and then you can take the legs long. From here, we're still on three or four springs. I think I have four on. You're gonna reach the arms up, and then from here, just bring your legs to wherever you do the 100. I'm gonna lift from the bottom. Nice big inhale. On your exhale, you're gonna come up into the upper up curl, bring the arms down, reach the legs away as you inhale for five and exhale for five. If this is too much, you might be able to just place the feet down. This is nice. I'll do a couple breaths here and I'll do a couple of breaths in a couple different positions. Handles are optional. You can always do whatever version of the 100 works for you. So I'm gonna bring the legs up at an angle. Really reach into those straps, reach into that spring, take the legs away. Last breath. Bring the knees into your chest, bring the arms back. Transition here to come up. Tricky one, you can just come up. Otherwise, your hands, both handles go into one hand. You're gonna take your hand back behind the leg. As you curl up, you're gonna press into this arm and you're gonna come up into a teaser. And I just realized that I'll probably be coming up a little different because my pants are a little sticky. Okay, <clears throat> put the foot bar up. We're going straight into elephant, which doesn't usually happen this early. So you need two springs, foot bar comes up, and how you'll get into this, both hands on the foot bar, bring one foot up, and then the other foot up. You have two springs. So two springs can be, depending on your former, it might be two heavy, might be one heavy, one light, two mediums, whatever is there for you. You wanna be in a place where you can sit back and reach the, the hip is over the knee, over the ankle. So I know traditionally you see people all the way back here and pressing back. From here I can be here this is okay for me but it's a stretch and I'm weighted in the balls of my feet instead of in my heels so I just need to walk my feet up a little bit so that's the thing here and I want you to find that that you can have a nice weight in the ball of your foot and in the heel of your foot and then have ankle knee hip you're pushing back and you're lifting those bottom ribs up pull the bottom ribs up pull the waistband up Stand in your hands, you have equal weight in the hands, arms, and your legs. Take the legs back and bring them forward. We have eight here. Doesn't matter how far back you go, you wanna keep the shape in your back and you want to pull yourself in with all your abdominal muscles. So pull it in with your core. Two more. Come on in very carefully, come off your reformer. Keep the foot bar up. I'm going to gear out for this one, stomach massage. Gearing out is a way, if you have, I would say, a lot going on in your middle, it's hard for you to just get your legs up on your foot bar and you can't put your foot bar down at all. Mine only has one position besides the down position. 
that you would want to gear out on this one. So for stomach massage, we're gonna put four springs on. And this is where we get to grab the wedge or the slant and a pad. So you're gonna place it here so that we can get our sacrum right in this little crack right here so that we can be in a nice C shape when we sit down. Now, if you have trouble reaching the front of the carriage, I showed in another video, you can get a resistance band and place the resistance band over, place your feet on the resistance band and you can hold the resistance band here with your feet pressing into it. So scoot yourself forward, roll back, and then come into that C shape. From here, arms, you are pressing into the front of the carriage. You're not gripping for dear life. However, if it's hard for you to get here, you can hold right here. What does this look like? It's like our mat rolling like a ball, and that's what you can do there. From here, we have eight. So you're gonna inhale to press out. It is heavy, forces you into the shape here. Lower the heels, lift the heels, then exhale to come back in. So we have seven more. I really want you to reach out and feel the length in your legs. Stretch the legs under, pull your heels up with your, with your core all the way through your back, and then come back in. We have six more. So breath again. Breath is a tool, not a rule, but if you were gonna do it, inhale out, lower lift, exhale to come in. So it's a longer inhale and then exhale. Last one, come in. You're gonna drop a spring, so you might need to take your feet off for that. We have three springs here for our arms back. Bring the legs up from here. Say you were here, you're gonna reach the arms back. Put them on your shoulder blocks. If this is too much, you're gonna do a fist. And I'll just go ahead and do this one because it's nicer for my shoulders. You're gonna do a fist and you're gonna press those fists in, straighten the arms, open up the chest, heart to the world. Same movement, you come out, lower lift, come back in. We have eight here as well. Just remember to just think about, even though you're pressing into those arms, that your upper body is so engaged that last one, when you come in, you just be able to float those hands up because that's in our level two, is to do the reaching. Come on off, put your foot bar down. Leg circles and frog is gonna be our replacement for level two sh short spine since we're doing level one work today. I like the long straps. So you'll be in your long loops. If you have the double loop with the ropes, otherwise I'm gonna take off my handles. Headrest comes up for this one, which is really nice. Any two springs that you want, usually a heavy and a light, unless you have a reformer like mine, and then everything is heavy or slightly heavy. From here, we'll play around with picking both legs up at the same time. Now, if you, have to press out and put your leg in, that is absolutely okay. What I want you to do is when you do this workout, if you take your right leg in first on one day, next day I'd like you to try and take the left leg in and keep alternating those because we are always picking up from one side. It means that we're strengthening the muscles on that one side to put the legs in. It might make it harder for you to come into a position like this and try and lift both feet in at the same time. So just make sure you're playing around with both sides. From here, head is up, and we're gonna do our frog, and then we'll just do some frog circles. Heels together, toes apart. Your legs are in some turnout here. You press the heels away, and then you pull them back. I like to tell people that you can go as low as you want to, as long as you can keep the tailbone heavy, number one, two, the straps aren't touching your body. And three, 
it's not touching the shoulder blocks. And if it does, it's okay. But when we get to circles, if you take it too low and you have the leather strap, sometimes it flicks off the shoulder blocks. And what happens there is sometimes it'll smack you in the face. So I always like people to make sure that they have some room between their straps and their body or their shoulder blocks. And then still tailbone is heavy here. So we're in that tall spine or that neutral pelvis. Last one, I like to do five or eight of those. Then we're gonna go into the circles. You're gonna reach the heels up, take them out, take the heels together, then bend the legs back in. We have five here, reach it up, take the legs out and then bend back in. Three more. I like to inhale for about half and exhale for about half, but that all depends on, you know, how much I'm talking during the workout or, you know, teaching or how I feel. Okay. Last one there, pull it in, then stretch the legs out. So opposite direction, take the legs out. You're still in turnout, bring the legs up, keep the tailbone heavy, heels come together, bend the legs down. So you saw the carriage didn't move when I did that. So, you know, some goals, reach it out, come up and bend back in. Two more. We're doing this with some intention, which I love. So that was the last one there. From here, you're just gonna hang those up or throw them back. And then you'll come up, put all four springs on that you have, and grab your short box and your pull. Headrest comes down. And then you can put your box wherever you need to so that you have a hand width behind you. This is really important because I may have said this in another video, but your sacrum is about the height of your hand this way. And so when you put that down, you're ensuring that you have enough space on your box to roll yourself back and you have support of that sacrum. Grab your bar. Nice tip here. Bar goes underneath the foot strap and then you lift it to put the strap over your foot. We have three things we're going to do here today. Reach those feet into that strap, pull out on that strap like crazy. Then from here, you may have heard me say this before. From here, I want you to squeeze the butt. Like I want you to engage the butt and it's not like squeezing it together, but it's engaging the rump so that you can be about an inch taller. And when you're here, this activates your back body, it activates your legs, and then you pull out. What this does is it opens up your low back and your sacrum. So when we go into round position, let's grab the pull for this one. Sometimes that's nice. Reach the knuckles away here, actively pull out on that bar, then engage the butt. And then as you roll back, continue to engage in your back side and your back body, and then you can round back up. So it gives you a little bit more openness in the back so that you can come back a little bit further. And then depending on what pants you have, you might have to slide back a little bit because engaging the back body can sometimes make you move a little bit. Press out into that bar. Like this is our fourth one. We have five. So if you wanted to practice extension, you can come back. And then since you're squeezing, you're opening up the sacrum, you have room that you could extend back. And then as you come up, tuck the chin, reach into that backside to bring yourself up. It's a lot of work. Resituate yourself, reach the pull up. I want you to be in a place where you can reach up and not have your shoulder in your ear. So that might look like out here, it might look like out here. From here, you're gonna again, gauge the butt, do a little bit of a lumbar round here. And then from here, you can flat back and pull yourself forward for five. So we reach it back and come back up. And we're thinking that we have a little something here that's pulling us up and pulling us back. So we have the tallest spine possible. 
the last one. And back up. Put the bar away. I'm going to do also level one. It's a tree prep, but it's called bend and stretch. So from here, keep one foot under, take the other one, square the hips, and you're just going to wrap your arm around. You're going to pull it in. You're going to pull that arm in here. Shoulders are still square with the hips. And then from here, you're going to try and straighten the leg and bend the leg. Try and keep yourself square. Try and keep yourself in a little bit of a round shape, but you are just trying to, um, what's the word? You're trying to pull in and stay tall through here, wide in the collarbones as you do this exercise. So we'll just do three. I think that might've been four. So I forgot my words. That's okay. Switch and make sure that you're square again. <clears throat> reach same arm and leg. I like to reach that one under first and then take the other one on top. That way I can pull in. I do like to switch those arms. So if I take my right arm under and it's on the bottom first on the left, I like to do the opposite because if you always have the same arm down. So if I did this, I'm going to, my body's going to turn this way and I'm always turning and pulling and strengthening one side of the body. So again, we need to make sure that we are thinking about this asymmetrically and balancing out the body. So that's why I like to say, if it's my right leg, my right arm's gonna come in first. If it's my left leg, even though it's uncomfortable for me because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna pull that arm in and then bring this arm in. Then from here, we have a little bit of a C shape, but you're opening up those collarbones. You're gonna try and reach that leg up. This one is tight might need to let go just a little bit, but you still have that nice open, open arm, open chest, reach the elbows away to reach up and come back down. So however tight you're pulling on that one, it may hinder you a little bit to reach the leg up. So you'll just take, instead of being here, you'll just take the arms wide, but you're going to have your elbows away from each other. So it looks a little bit like, like this. As you can see here, like my elbows are strong, which is essentially the same thing we do in our rolling like a ball here. We try to be super powerful here. For, so for this one, you're gonna be powerful here, and then you're gonna be powerful here. Take the box off. Foot bar comes up. Headrest can come up, knee stretches. I always like to end knee stretches with round, so we'll do round, arch, round. I think Pilates also like to do that, Mr. Pilates. From here, two springs, two of your favorite springs, and then you're gonna try and reach those heels back. If you're not there yet, you can always stick a little pad there. Um, I go ahead and keep it open that way I just know what I'm working toward. From here, your hip width, if you need a little connection in the middle, grab a ball and put it there. Arms come forward, tailbone reaches down, you're sitting back. Just like our elephant, we've already been here and in our round as well. You're gonna take those hands, grab the bar, push into the bar, and then you're gonna take the legs back and pull them in. Just like with the elephant, it's the pull in that we wanna do. We have eight doesn't matter how far you go. You're pushing into those legs, pulling yourself back in with your center. Last one here, switch into arch. So you're just moving the body. Think about doing cat cow. That's what this one is. Chest reach forward, tailbone is back. We have eight. And then we'll end with round, which will be eventually turn into knees off. Round again, press yourself back, see where you are now. Three more. Bring it in. Add three to four springs, whatever your footwork springs were. Come off and lay down. Bring the feet up for running. Headrest should already be up because we put it up on the last exercise. You're on the balls of your feet. Reach yourself back. So come back to that footwork position here. Nice footwork position. 
you're in parallel. Reach yourself out from here. Drop one heel and lift the opposite knee. And then do the same thing here. Then you can go a little bit faster and make it more intentional. Drop the heel, lift the knee. Drop the heel, lift the knee. From here, you want to have weight in your tailbone, equal weight in those hips, and nice open collarbones. If this feels crazy on your shoulders, on your traps, you can drop a spring. I really like to be on a heavier spring because after you get done with this, which is 20 each leg, then we're gonna go into bottom lift and it's easier for those of us in a larger body to be able to connect to that exercise when we have a heavier spring. Last one. Take yourself out nice and straight, lift the heels, bend the knees, come home. From here, lift the legs together, put them wide Pilates V. I like the corner of my foot bar on my arch. You can play around with that position. You might want heels. I always feel a little bit safer when it's my arches. Headrest comes down. As you're sitting here, tailbone is heavy, shoulders are heavy, bottom rib heavy. So when we pick up, we're just gonna pick up the body. We're not gonna curl it up. We're just gonna lift the tailbone body up. So off the mat, no curling. That way we stay in our tallest spine. You barely lift up, then you press out. You're about a hand, like a fist underneath, and then you're actively trying to push the tailbone down to bring the carriage in, okay? So you're in a, we call it a neutral pelvis here, to press that tailbone down. We have five to eight. I'm gonna do one more. Reach it in, hold it in, then you can roll the spine down. Pop on up, we're gonna do Eve's lunge, which at the end, at the end of the level one series, it kind of just ends with bottom lift, but it's nice to get some split practice in. And Eve's lunge is not done up on the carriage, your legs up here, but you have a foot on solid ground. And this preps you for front splits, which comes in the level two work. For front splits, you keep your shoulders and your hips squared and then you're taking one leg back as the other is forward. So really Eve's lunge is a grounding version of your front split. Um, a little less scary because again, your foot gets to be grounded on the floor. For this one, I like to do maybe one and a half spring. Again, I have all heavies and then one that's a medium heavy. So you can play around with your springs. If you do too much, um, you might be forcing one side of your body back. If you do a little light, you might like drop into the stretch a little bit too much. So you get to play around with it. Come up and take your front foot towards the front of the carriage. Inside hand comes to the foot bar, then take the inside leg to the, inside leg to the carriage, and then you're gonna press the foot back into the shoulder block. From here, you can walk that front foot up a little bit. Then you're gonna place your hand wherever you can to square the shoulders and the hips. Then from here, you're gonna press both legs back and come back in by bending the legs. If you have a slippery floor, you're gonna to wanna to pad underneath that front foot so that your foot doesn't slide away. And we're just gonna do five here and then we'll switch to the other side. I do sometimes like to take my hand, this hand back behind me to make sure that I'm keeping my chest open and I'm keeping my hips and my shoulders square. Last one. There's lots of variations with this one that we could do. Take yourself off, walk over to the other side. Inside hand to the foot bar, inside leg to the reformer trying to get those toes down, ball of foot and heel, trying to press in to the shoulder block. And then walk your hand wherever you need to to square the shoulder, square the hips. It's gonna be different from every, for everyone because we all have different size hips and shoulders. Walk the foot forward. Mine you can see is a little bit in front of my carriage and that's okay. 
bring the other hand back if that's there for you. If this is a little bit too much of a balance challenge, instead of putting your hand here, which will take you out of squaring, I would recommend that you grab a gondola pole, foam roller, anything like that, that you can bring yourself here so that you can straighten those shoulders and those hips. So I'll just do a couple like this. Pressing into the hand, both legs get to press away and then come back in. Press away and come back in. Three more. And I do have one and a half on right now. I could probably do just one heavy and that would be good for me today. This is a little bit more of a challenge than a stretch and that's okay too. All right, and then you get to come up. This is really nice to be able to square the hips and not have to take the hips or take the shoulders over to put both hands on. All right, and that's it. That's us playing around with this level. Now I have this pole and I don't know what to do with it, uh, but that's us playing with the level one order uh, from the advanced. So the other video that you show that is based off of a different intermediate order that I learned, but now I'm going to start playing around with just looking at the level five advanced order and doing level one, two, three, four from there and just eliminate, eliminating the other, the higher levels, if that makes sense. So that we are practicing everything in the level five order. So the next one that I do, that is level two, it'll be the same exact thing. And we'll just be adding in the level two where they go in the level five order. And we'll just continue to practice from there. I might do a few more of the level ones though, because there are definitely ways that we can prop the body and play around with some of these exercises that make them even more accessible than what we did today. I mean, there are so many different ways to do the 100 alone that just right there, we could play around with that. We can play around with spring tension and footwork and some of the other exercises. I could do an entire leg series instead of just frog and frog circles. So we'll just continue to play with some of this and um, allow whoever's watching this to try um, a whole bunch of different variations on the reformer work. But thanks for joining me today.